Hey you guys, Desmond here, and welcome back to the channel. Woo, woo, woo. Today, we are here to discuss Drag Race Germany, Season 1, Episode 1. Welcome to Dishland. I hope I said that right now. I'm, I, I tried. I tried there. I said it several times before I started this video, so hopefully that came out right. So before we get started, I just want to remind everyone to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any Drag Race coverage that is coming up. So, before we get into it, as you can see, it's just me today. Um, Lucretia will not be joining us this week, but she will be here for episode 2 and going forward. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, we will be covering Drag Race Brazil, and by we, I mean me. Um, it will be a solo review. Krisha has a really hectic work and school schedule right now, so we're only going to do three reviews together, and then the rest of them will be covered by me, by myself. So, going forward, she'll be doing Germany, she'll be doing Down Under, and she'll be doing Philippines. Yes, because Mexico ends this week. That's why she's not doing the first episode of Germany. So going forward, you're only going to see her in three of the reviews and then the rest of the reviews because let's be real, a lot of drag races coming this fall. So you'll be seeing some with her, some with me. And we'll just let you know as we go. She might jump in for a second and have to jump out. But yeah, Brazil will be covered by me. Um, that review will be out most likely, if not Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Because I'm going to record it tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to be covering the first two episodes. I was like, eh, I'll wait for the second. Since, you know, they're doing the split and review it all at one time. And then going forward, it will be every week. So, without further ado, let's get into this review. And I know I've mentioned before, but I'm going to mention it again. We're going to need y'all to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Mm-hmm. We have a goal of 500 subscribers, and I would love to reach that by the end of the year. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead. I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll give you a second. You hit the button? Okay, good. So now let's get into this gig. So, we are here at Drag Race Germany. So, we find out that they're going to get a year supply on Anastasia Beverly Hills, just like every other country now. Um, and they're going to get a cash prize of 100,000 euros. And I looked it up. This is the highest cash prize any international season has gotten. So, I was like, okay. And then I did the conversion. I'm not sure if I converted it right, but I did do a conversion. And for American dollars, it's like 107000 So, I'm like, okay. Okay. So, yeah. I'm happy for the German gals. I hope whoever gets it loves every second of it. So, Drag Race Germany. I'm excited. Let's get into it. Now, one thing that really irritated me about this episode was um, when they were doing their walkthroughs, they didn't give them a full body shot at the end of their walk-in. You know what I'm saying? When they're usually like, hi, my name is such and such. You see a full body shot. The only time you see a full body shot is right here at the beginning. Now, there are a few that you do get a full body shot. But for most of them, this is the best you can get. And you really can't see the look that well. But granted, if you're here, that means you've watched the show already. And if you haven't, go ahead and pause. Go watch Drag Race Germany on Bob Present Plus, And then come on back. Unless you're in Germany, then it's on Paramount Plus. Then come back. And let's continue. So, up first, we have Yvonne Nightstand. I thought this look was lovely. I really enjoyed the floral print. Um, the black bodysuit, I think I would have done without it. But, overall, I do like this look. Up next, we have Victoria Shakespeare's. I thought so. Um, yeah, this was a look. I love her. Let me let me let me state this. I love Victoria Shakespeare's. Like, she was one of the highlights for this episode. Um, this look, I do like it. Like, it is a tube, but like a soft one. Um, I feel like we could have elevated just a little bit more in certain areas. But I'm excited to see this queen because they, you know, they threw that curveball at it and. I thought we were going to say goodbye to this lady. But I'm excited to see more from her. So up next we have Lily Cocoon. 
And I thought this was a fun and campy way to come into the workroom, doing a Karen-inspired look. Baby, if she really wanted to give the full Karen moment, she should have gave some wedges right here. Or those ugly tinny shoes they like to be wearing. That would have just took it over the top right there for me. But overall, I thought this was a really good look. Up next is the only Naomi. She's one of the few that did get a full body shot. And baby, this baby is skinny. Now, for those who don't know, I'm currently on my weight loss journey. I don't want to get this skinny. Um, if I start getting this skinny, y'all say something. Like, this when you need to chill. You need to chill. But um, she looks good. Um, I really love this color combination of the orange and the blue. Uh, for those who don't know, orange is my favorite color. Um, but yeah, everything checks the box. But it's just she's so skinny. She's so skinny. Oh. Uh, oh, she's only 22. I must have missed that part. Wow. Up next, we have Barbie Q. When I say I love this queen right here, I love this queen right here. Barbie Q. I don't know. She just she just pulled me in this whole episode. And it was just, I've, I've really enjoyed what I've seen from her so far. And I'm saying it now. She is in my top four. Mm -hmm. She's in my top four. Typically, we don't talk about the top fours and threes like we used to. Um, but I will mention it in this episode who my top four is. But I will let you know. Barbecue is one of them. Now, to this look. I thought this was fun. This is cute. This is a look you can do a lot of things in. Because you never know what Drag Race is going to throw at you when you first walk in through the door. So, I thought this was cute. Up next, we have Nikita Vegas, I believe is her last name. Um, I love this. I love the oversized t-shirt. I love the thigh highs, the pink hair. It all, it checks every box for me. It checks every box for me. Again, it's accessible for whatever may be thrown at them, even though they got the change for their mini challenge. But say if they didn't, this could have worked with anything. I really enjoyed this look. Now, we're going to talk about this queen just a little bit later. Because there was some haterade that was sipping. But we did learn a little bit more in Untucked, which we will talk about that as well. So, Nikita Vegas. Yes, I remembered her name. This is, I know it, Tessa Testicle. That's it, Tessa Testicle. I love this queen. Uh, I feel like she's going to be giving us good confessionals all season. Um, this look, a little bit more on the basic side. But I do like it. And, you know, I thought it was cute when she turned around and used the whoopee cushion to make the fart noise. I thought that was funny. But, yeah, this is a little basic, but I do like it. I love this hair, though. That hair. You see, I'm already bald. Just right here, okay? But, yeah, um, I love, uh, I like her look. I love the hair. Yep, Tessa Testicle. So, up next, Metamore Kid. Okay, Metamore Kid. I thought this was cute. Um, I love the shoes. Um, I wish the hair, like I get it, you know, the, the bodysuit has the white and black. But I would also would have liked to seen um, a different color hair. Like maybe just one solid color. I think if it was fully black, I think that would have just completed the look for me. And maybe like a cute choker. But overall, this is a good look. I do like it. Um, up next, we have Lorela Rivers. I like this queen. I like the hair. The harp is lovely. The shoes aren't bad. But the actual ensemble... Eh. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to boot it. I am. I am. I do like this queen, but this look... Especially compared to some of the other looks we've gotten this week. It's just like, eh, it's okay. More on the boot side. So, yeah, we're going to see a boot. Um, up next is Pandora Knox. I love this queen. I love this entrance look. Um, this is our third cisgender queen. Yes, our third one. A cisgender woman to compete. Um, super excited. I love seeing more diversity. Now, can we get some drag kings on the show, please? I don't care what country does it first. Can we just get some drag kings on the show? 
Kim, please, get, let France do it. We've seen a uh, drag king representation on Drag Race France and, I mean, season one and two. So can we get a natural drag king on season three? Give us two. Give us two. Give us two. Because um, from what I'm hearing, I don't know who the cast is for season 16 for RuPaul's Drag Race, but I was told a drag king is nowhere in sight. So I'm like, oh, okay. So come on now, let's, let's, get, let's get it together. Okay? All right, lovely look. 29, here we go. And then last but definitely not least, we have Kelly Hilton. Hilton. Um, I love this look. You know, I love some French, honey. I'm not sure if that's the Texas in me. I love the cat look. I just love the way it shimmies. I would have chosen a different hair. I would have chosen a different hair. But overall, I really enjoyed this look. So this is our 11 queens. Again with the number 11. What's going on? Like this year, 11. Both um, Mexico and now Germany, 11. So, okay. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. we see how it worked out with Mexico. So we're going to have a couple double save episodes, which we got one today. So, well, yesterday is when this aired. So the alarm goes off and we have all the queens lined up here getting ready to officially meet the host for the season. Well, the co-host. Um, but before we continue onwards, I would have to say my favorite look I think I would have to give it to the only Naomi. Like, that—that that is, I really enjoy that print. It looks good on her. That hair is nice. I would say she was my favorite. My least favorite would have to be, I believe her name was Lorelai Rivers, this baby here. It's just, yeah. And also, doesn't she kind of look like Orion's story just a little bit? Just a little bit? I hate comparing queens. I do. But doesn't she look like Orion's story? Just a, just a hair. Just a small hair. Just a small hair. All right, so we find out that this season will be co-hosted by Barbie Breakout. So two Barbies. I think this is the first time where the host and a competitor share a name. Could you imagine somebody walking to the workroom saying, Oh, my name is RuPaul. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, but Barbie Breakout comes into the workroom and announces that it's just not her. We're going to have another co-host as well. So please welcome. I'm going to get his name right. It is Gianni Javanik. I think I said his last name wrong, but we're going to get there. Um, it's Barbie's partner. Um, I thought that was cute. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about a non-drag queen being the host of a show. Like, if he was just part of the panel, the jury, as a lot of countries call it, um, I, would, I wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't have any issues. There's just, I don't know how I feel a non-drag queen hosting Drag Race. We're going to have to see how it goes. So far, I love him. He seems like a good time. We're just going to have to wait and see. So, now that they're here, they're announcing to them what the prizes are this season. They're going to get a crown and scepter, a year's supply on Anastasia Beverly Hills, and they, oh, a winner. They didn't mention it later in the episode, but they did mention the winner gets a Rue badge here, which if you look, it says Drag Race Dushlin. So, I'm wondering, was originally the show supposed to be called that, but they changed it to Germany last minute. So they said each week the winner will get this, even though they didn't mention after Pandora's win later. And the ultimate prize for the season is a cash tip of 100,000 euros. Chingle, chingle. You know, I love it. I love it. Hopefully France and UK can get on board with um, prize money. Um, I know with uh, the UK, they're on the BBC, so like there's certain limitations they have to follow to give a prize money. Hopefully, you know, they can get that in order so that we can start giving prize money for the girls. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure what France's situation is. It's probably something similar to uh, UK. I forgot. And then Italy also needs a cash prize. It's bad enough they got the truck driver. Yeah, I'm going to keep calling her a truck driver since she called my girl a truck driver um, as a host. 
So, come on, let's give these queens some money. Give them some coins, because drag is expensive, okay? Mm. So, now it's time for the mini challenge. And Barbecue, and not Barbecue, Barbie Breakout um, tells the queens that they will be doing a photo shoot. A princess photo shoot. Now, I'm going to be mad, because if I would have got that list and saw a princess look, I would have thought that would have been for the main stage, not for a mini challenge. But, hey... It is what it is. So, uh, oh wait, we completely skipped over this part right here. Forgive me. I, I do not know why I skipped that. But anyway, um, so we get a lovely message here from Shireen David. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's cute. And you know, they're talking about how popular she is in Germany. I'm like, oh, that's nice. So I'm like, because we already know she's going to be the guest judge for the episode. So I'm like, oh, it's nice she could record a little something for them as well. Uh-uh, that's not all. Here she comes prancing through the workroom. I'm like, okay. Okay. Everyone's super excited. And she is so much fun. I really enjoyed her as a special guest judge this week. So with them all together, then they announced that they'll be doing a photo shoot where they will be doing a Disney fairy tale, ex Disney, a princess fairy tale, et cetera, et cetera. Like I said, I'd have been mad that this was for a damn photo shoot. I'm like, what do you mean a photo shoot? No, this needs to be on the runway. <laughs> so we are here and uh, the queens come out and Walter's back. Um, for those who don't know, they're shooting this in Colombia. So, it makes sense seeing the same photographer that they used for Mexico. So, yeah. So, I'm glad to see Walter back. Um, but the queens basically have this beautiful castle behind them. They have to stand on this. And just like every drag race uh, photo shoot, there's a twist. They're being twisted on here. And... They're having fake snow sh uh, blown into their face. So, after the mini challenge is complete, the judges... <coughs> Hello. The judges announced that the winner is Pandora Knox. And baby, she ate. She really did. I was thoroughly impressed by everything she was doing. Although, Nikita... Had a little problemo. We're going to talk about it just here in a second about her winning. But yeah, look at this photo. Just stunning. Just freaking stunning. So, Barbie Breakout um, announces that this week's challenge is a runway challenge. We need to see your signature drag look so we can get to know who you are. So, after she leaves the workroom, the queens get out of drag. And, um, Miss Nikita had a little problem. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't think it's, she pretty much, I don't think it's fair that you won because you were sitting on your, uh, turning table thing. I don't know what you call it. And she was like, oh, sore loser, pretty much. But what gets me is, you just don't know, there were several queens that sat down on that wheel. It just wasn't Pandora. But you didn't see everybody else's. You just saw Pandora's and then you went but we find out a little bit more later and it it, it it made sense for what we saw here and I'm like okay I get it but we need to work on that honey because there's no need to lash out at people for no damn reason okay okay so um it is now elimination day and well which let's be real they made them change and walk back in because I imagine they shot this all in one day there's no need to do two different days for this Anyway, so they sit down and they talk about the diversity of the table. Um, my only thing is I wish we would have had a big girl this season. We don't have a big girl. One or two big girls, you know. That would have completed the diversity for me. For me. You know what I'm saying? But it's very important. And I'm glad we're getting it. Especially in the first season. A lot of times they're like, oh, we'll get it, you know next season or in this case 16 seasons down the line but i'm glad that we were taught they talked about it it's very important i love every second of it um we also got a little uh backstory on barbecue um just talking about how important it is for representation and for people to see each other like 
a lot of people have an issue with representation, especially when it comes to the queer community. And for me, I love it. I want more of it, honestly, because it's just a little sprinkle and y'all losing y'all's minds behind it. I feel like there should be more. And the reason why is because we're telling the kids that are different, that know they're different, regardless if they're gay, trans, whatever, they know they're different. They know they don't fit in. Now they can see somebody on TV and be like, okay, I'm not alone in this world. I can make it. That That's what the importance of representation is. It's not, they're shoving it down our throats. Shut up. Y'all on somewhere, honey. Well, there's some things being shoved down our throats, but that's for a different podcast, honey. But yeah, thank you, Barbecue, for sharing that. Now. It's time for the main stage, and we get Barbie Breakout looking lovely in this uh, green and emerald number here. Um, we are joined by Gianni Javanik. It's that last name. I know I'm saying it wrong. Javanik. Javanik. I'm going to get it down, y'all. By the end of this season, I'm going to have it down. For some reason, me and German just don't get along. You know what I'm saying? Every time I've tried to speak some German or learn a little bit of German, me and my, my mouth is like, no. <laughs> no, but Gianni is here. We're also joined by our other permanent judge, Deanne De Brill, which, side note, I love her. I love every second of her. She is a hoot and a half, and I can't wait to see more of her. And then, of course, our special guest judge, Sharin David. So, the category is Signature Drag Look. Now, they didn't give the nameplate, so I had to look down on my paper here to see who went in what order. Um, up first, we had Metamore Kid. I love this look. I was really shocked this wasn't in the top. She came out, and I'm like, this is the first runway on the first season of Drag Race Germany. This was everything. I just, I love every piece of this. I love the stocking, how it goes in between the toe down there. I just... This was, a, this, was, this was good for me. I really enjoyed every piece of this. Up next, we have Lorelai Rivers. This is cute. This is cute. It is cute. It's very safe. I will say that. She, she, she was placed correctly. Up next is Pandora Knox. Y'all, just look at the material. <laughs> look at this. Like... You wish. You really do wish. Like, I love the details. Because, you know, it is just a bodysuit. But look at the details. The pieces on the shoulder. Over here on the knees. Above the boot. Like, if you're just going to do a bodysuit, this is how you're go supposed to do it. Don't just... Because most queens would have just came out in this bodysuit. Nothing extra. She was like, no, let me show you all I am. Who I am. And I'm like, okay, I know who Pandora Knox is. I do, I do. And of course, you know, I got several screenshots. I had to, I had to. So, up next, we have Yvonne Nightstand. I did not like this look. I didn't. Like, at all. <laughs> and it's just, it's not cohesive to me. Um... Maybe I'm just not catching the... Why is it every time I record, my nose starts itching? Um, maybe it's just, you know, because I'm not German, so I'm not from Germany. Maybe the reference is going over my head, but I didn't particularly care for this. I didn't. Up next is Tessa Testicle. I like this. I don't like the color combination. I wish it would have just been solid purple or solid black. But I do like this. And I would have chosen a different wig. I felt like the wig just didn't complement the outfit at all. And she needed some sort of necklace to put right here on the chesticle area so we could see a little something. something. You know what I'm saying? Because all we see is skin. We need, we need something pretty right here. But yeah, overall, I thought this was a decent look. I was really shocked she was in the bottom, let alone the bottom too. I was like, do, do we not see old girls look? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, up next, we have Victoria Shakespeare's. And I do like this look. 
but it is just two pieces of string tied around her. Now she does have the coat here that she's dragging behind her, but I just, I felt like I wanted more, honestly. I wanted more. Like, I do like it. I do like it. It's just... I like it. I do. It's just we need more. This is Drag Race. You can't just walk out in a couple strings and call it a look. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I love me some Victoria. And I do, I do like this look. It's just... It, it could have been more. Um, up next, we have Nikita Vegas. This was okay. Um, I agree with the judges. I didn't I didn't feel like I knew who she was when she walked away from the runway. And I'm like, that was a big part. That's supposed to be your signature drag, your signature look. Who is she? In the words of RuPaul. And I don't know who she is. Don't know who she is. Um, up next, we have Lily Cocoon. Um, I like this look. I love the shape. I love the proportions. My only thing is, I'm not the biggest fan of the color combination. Like, this blue and brown don't really work for me. And I'm not sure if it's a reference to something that she's making. But I wish she would have done a different color combination. But everything else, like, is stunning. Like, I want, I want one. Just in a different color combination. Um, up next is Kelly Hilton. I thought this was cute. Um, she said it was a reference to uh, Beyonce's uh, Belle Mead line. And I'm like, okay, I see that. But if we're going to make it a full reference, we should have made it black. But yeah, it, this was a safe look. A safe look. Um, up next is the only Naomi. Now she said it herself that you know, her drag is basic. And that's exactly what she delivered here. Me personally, I, under, I understand you say this is who you are. You typically do basic looks. This is Drag Race, though. And I, I feel like I don't know who you are. Um, honestly... When I go to the bars, I see five other queens that look just like this. Like, what makes you different from the rest? You can say you wear basic looks. That's fine. But what makes you different from the rest? Because to me, you look like every other Brittany Ashley and Jana I see at the club every weekend. So, but what, what makes you who you are? It's a cute look. I give it a two. But she would have been in the bottle because who are you? I, who are you? And then last but definitely not least is Barbecue. She came out and I was stunned. I'm like, this is beautiful. This is art. This is representation as well as she was explaining during the critiques. And I'm like, okay, okay. I really like this look. I really did. So we have all of our queens lined up here. And I would have to say my favorite look of the evening is Pandora Knox. And my least favorite look. I'm going to have to say Yvonne. No. 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 I will say Nikita. I'll say Nikita. Yeah. 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 So. We find out that the tops and bottom this week are as followed. I have it right here. In the top, we have Pandora Knox, Barbecue, and Lily Cocoon. And in the bottom, we have Nikita Vegas, Tessa Testicle, and Victoria Shakespeare's. Now, I would have switched out Lily for uh, Metamore Kid. And then I would have switched out Tessa. <sighs> I'm going to say Naomi. Like, I don't particularly care for um, whose look was it, Yvonne's. But at least it was, like, I, I, I understood who she was. I just didn't like the look. So, yeah, I would have done it that way. And I would have made the bottom to Naomi and Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how Naomi performs. If I was the host, we would have found out. But 
that's how I would have judged this week. So after the judges' critiques, we go into Untucked. And we're sitting there and we find out that, you know, Nikita struggles with some confidence issues. She's always feeling like she's not enough. Which, which, if you remember in the beginning of this episode, it made sense why she lashed out at Pandora. Because she's like, oh, I'm doing all this and you did that in one. You know what I'm saying? And that just comes with, you know, time. Learning how to shut that voice up. Because I used to have that voice all the time saying, oh, you're not good enough. Why are you even trying? Like, and I know... I know I'm good enough. I know we can achieve the goals that we have set in life. But sometimes you just got to shut that voice up. So hopefully she'll be able to shut that voice up. And hopefully soon. Because we all know Drag Race is a pressure cooker. So hopefully she'll be able to shut that voice up and then start slaying on these hoes. So uh, we go back to the main stage. And we find out the winner of this week's challenge is Pandora Knox, which I agree 100%. And we find out that the bottom two is Tessa Testicle and Victoria Shakespeare's. Now, I've already stated I would have done Victoria and the only Naomi. But hey, this was the team's decision. Um, so, they lip sync to this song by Shireen Davis. I'm going to try to pronounce it. Le Bin Weir? Le, Le Bin Weir. Hopefully I said that right. Um... But let's talk about the lip sync. I thought this was a really good lip sync. This is a good first lip sync for the season. I thought both queens pulled out their tricks. Um, I do think, speaking of, I do think Victoria hit that cartwheel like too, too many times. And I felt like Tessa did one too many splits. Because I think she ended up doing like two. I believe she did one too many splits. And honey, I don't know what this was. Victoria. It it, it, it it did not land gracefully. No, it did not. I was like, ooh. I'm like, yeah, Tessa won this lip sync. Um, just watching it, I, yeah, this was the first one she did here. Um, but yeah, watching this lip sync, I was really, in, I was in, entertained by both of them. And I'm like, I'm not sure if they're going to do like Mexico and save them both. But if they only save one, I believe it's going to be Tessa. And we find out after the lip sync that it's a, Group's decision, she said, because uh, she said we made our decision. So it's going to be similar to Espana in Canada, where the panel makes the decision on who stays and who goes. Um, I wish they would have done something like Espana or even Canada, you know, pass a card, a head nod, something to acknowledge that, you know, they made their decision. But they did make their decision. And at first they just said, Tessa, Shantae, you stay. And I'm like, okay, she was a slightly better. She didn't have that sloppy fall. So, yeah makes sense she'll stay in the competition my heart's gonna go break and if uh if she's ever at drag con i will definitely be going to go see victoria shakespeare's um but a little twist they're both staying Woo! like i said it was a decent it was not decent it was a good lip sync so like i'm not upset by the double save um I'm imagine it's going to be set up similar to how Mexico was because I imagine they'll probably have 12 episodes as well, which means we'll have two more episodes of non-eliminations coming. So they get the dance to, 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 to the moon. Um, and we go, we find out that next week that we don't know what their challenge is going to be. <laughs> that was my biggest thing from the, the pr next week on Drag Race Germany. And I'm like, well, you didn't really tell us what they were doing. You just saw that it had three minutes for the mini challenge. But we don't know what in particular they're going to be doing for the maxi challenge. So I'm intrigued. I'm ready to see. So now I told you at the end of this episode, I was going to do my top four. So I am writing them down. And y'all let me know down in the comments, who had your favorite look? Who is your top four for the season? That's what I want to know. See if we're if we have similar picks for the top four. So my first pick is clearly Pandora Knox. Like, come on, <laughs> come on now. Like we 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 it has to it has to. Um, my others are Barbecue, Metamore Kid, and Lily Cocoon. I think those are going to be our top four for the first season of Drag Race Germany. So let me down let me know down below if you agree. 
And we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here. So, you can find me on all social media platforms at Simply Desmond. That's S-I-M-P-L-Y-D-E-S-M-O-N-D. Thank you so much for spending a piece of your day with us. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, we really need to grow this channel. So, I'm going to plug it every chance I get. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And we will see y'all later this week for our normal... Well, you'll see me tomorrow for the Drag Race Brazil. Then you'll see me and Kresha this weekend. So, have a great day. Bye.